call me Droma Lama. Let me ask you a question. Do you like Star Wars? Do you like Mad Max? Every time you go to Walmart, do you always buy the great value brand of everything? If you answered yes to all three of those, then oh my gosh, you have such a good chance of actually liking this film. But you're not going to because of one simple fact and that simple fact is if you had the money you would actually buy the name brand stuff see this movie is is, is this it, it's great value cinnamon toaster pastries everybody knows that this is just fake pop tarts we we don't want this we, we don't want this movie what we want we want this this is what we want but no this is what we got instead this this is ideal this is the film we're watching so why do we have to watch this film rather than this film well I'll tell you why it's because your mother is working two jobs and she desperately wants to be able to give you pop tarts but she can't but the thing that she can give you she she can give you hope she can give you the hope of pop tarts and what happens when you take that hope what happens when you take that hope and, 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 and you put it in a VCR you put that hope in a VCR and you hit play you know what happens you know what movie comes on I'll tell you what movie comes on it's Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone you, you thought you were gonna watch Star Wars but no you, you got the great value pop-tarts so let's buckle up our seatbelts and pretend that what we're watching is real pop-tarts Space Hunter hunting space how do, how do you how do you hunt space? Isn't space nothing? Like, like, isn't space the actual absence of anything? I mean, if you're hunting nothing, are you even are you even a hunter? I mean, you don't specify the type of hunt that you're doing by the location you're gonna be in. Hey, Greg, you go you going deer hunting? Nope, going forest hunting. Yeah, what what is that? Well, you go out in the forest and then you find a deer and you shoot it. How how is it? How is that not deer hunting? Boy, you better check that attitude before I start going house hunting. I didn't know you were moving. All right, let's move on. I'm pretty sure I cannot make fun of this film's title anymore. I stand corrected. <laughs> what? What is this? What is this? What is this title? I mean, like, I honestly remember making some things that looked like this with, like, the clip art feature in Word 98. And, and, and like, even I knew that didn't look good. So if you haven't figured this out yet, this film desperately wants to be Star Wars. So much so that they even released this film five days before Return of the Jedi premiered. That's like trying to get people to care about a school board election five days before the presidential election. But anyways, the movie starts out with some space tour, I guess. Everything seems to be going fine until they get hit by some strange lightning. But I mean, oh, that's that's no big deal, Please right? Please do not be alarmed. No, nope, it's a big deal because the whole ship explodes. I mean, talk about LZ-129 in it, huh? Oh boy, that was a, that was a clever joke there. You, you gotta have to Google that one to get it. Now, unfortunately for us, one of the escape pods actually did survive. Otherwise, the movie would have been over by now. When your shuttle has homed in on the planet most accommodating to the needs of Earth native, you will be landed and processed with full security. What was that? F full security? Full security. And this is why I am now saying I will never do space tourism after watching this film. Elon, guess what? Mm-mm. Count me out. You never counted me in in the first place. Do not be alarmed. You have been traveling suspended in the Merrill Becker 3000 Emergency Space Shuttle. For your comfort, you have been given a mild cryogenic, which will wear off in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Wait a minute! Do you even know what a cryogenic is? That's like Walt Disney or like, like Han Solo! You're like completely frozen alive! You're frozen alive! There's, there's no point for a voiceover in your ship if you, you can't even hear it! Do not panic. An emergency homing device has been automatically triggered to ensure your safe retrieval. You will now remove your helmets. Please stay by your shuttle and take a few moments to relax. 
Everything I just said, I take back because I'm pretty sure that's just the director off camera. So I will now speak for every single woman out there. If you were just cryogenically frozen and you were just in a space suit for like a month and you take off your helmet and, you, and your hair looks like that, if you, your hair is literally that perfect, then I am going to buy whatever product she is using. Because I guarantee she is not born with it. Maybe she's born with it. So these three space girls with their sp space hair get kidnapped. Or as this film would like to say, desert napped. <laughs> it, it, it just amazes me how much this film wants to be Star Wars. It just, it just wants to be Star Wars so bad. Even like the soundtrack is so similar to the Tusken Raiders soundtrack. got kidnapped, I guess. I'm assuming that's what happened there. But anyways, we're introduced to our main character, Han Solo, a reckless smuggler with a sarcastic wit and a very practical... I'm sorry, I, I mean Wolf with two Fs. The second F stands for the greatest film. Reward, 3,000 mega credits. What? 3,000 mega credits. Mega credits? <laughs> that cannot be what it is. That cannot be what it is. It is! <laughs> Mega credits! So much better than the normal credits. I also figured out the problem with the film. It's Canadian. Yep. I mean, come on, you guys are responsible for Bieber. Just stay out of the sci-fi genre. Yeah, stick to what you're good at. Maple syrup and Putin. Putin. <laughs> I meant poutine. So now the one thing that this film did do right is they took C-3PO and they made him a hot chick. No. The communicator is out again. That's because we need a new autocorrelation spectrometer. Now that makes sense for two reasons really. First of all, you don't have to make a robot for the actual film. Or you can end up with a shiny gold plated trash can or just a real trash can. <laughs> Find me an all space May Day for Terra Sector, something about a shuttle rescue. Escape shuttle with three female survivors now definitely known. Definitely known. Now definitely known to have successfully detached from Starliner X ray 370 and is moving to landing on planet Terra 11. So Wolf and C-3PO do some research on planet Terra 11. The, that, that place the three girls got desert napped at. Current status, quarantine restricted. Quarantine restricted? Quarantine restricted. It doesn't even make any sense. I mean, the word restrict is in the definition of quarantine. So basically, Terra 11 is a planet that had a plague and all the residents are mutants or something. But that's enough information for Wolf and Chihaba Haba to go to Terra 11, where we are introduced to the two tribes that live on the planet. The Scavs and the Boners. I mean, z Zoners. Mate, my bad. That's my bad. So the zoners are easy to keep track of because they look like the black chicken people. Now, they're the ones attacking the scabs because the scabs are the ones that have those hairspray models from earlier. Now, it's really easy to get caught up in the fight between the zoners and the scabs. But if you do, you're going to miss a really important thing, right? This. This is a wind-powered train. I mean, like, what type of wind do they get on Terra 11? <laughs> and trust me, I, I've, done, I've done the math and the algorithms on this and the wind required to push a train via sail and they created some type of acrylic or carbonic material that had the strength and durability to withstand that type of wind it wouldn't matter because your skin would be ripped off <laughs> but anyways the fight continues this is actually really fun to watch until some hang gliders come in and snatch up the herbal essence trio who just so happen to have giant loops on their backs i mean like Maybe their purse handles? I don't I don't know. But in the midst of the battle, the female R2D2 got shot. You were the best damn model they ever put out. Now unlike Star Wars, when R2D2 or C3PO got damaged, people would always fix them. Wolf, on the other hand, is a completely different animal. He, he just melts her eyebrows. He he just he just he just kills her. Ladies, that's the type of man Wolf is. 
He's got two Fs in his name. For the God's sake, don't go near him. We're then introduced to our main villain, Overdog. To a small amount of disappointment from at least me that he wasn't an actual dog. But the hang gliding boners, hang gliding zoners, who swooped in and stole the Charlie's Angels, delivered them to Overdog's assistant, who is apparently very picky with his women. Can you tell if they have the girls? Can you see them yet? Are they pretty? I do hope they're young and soft, but not fat. But while all this is happening, our good old hero Wolf, with two Fs, is exploring the Forbidden Zone! People. It's while he's here in the Forbidden Zone that he runs into Shirley Temple, and they decided to team up because she knows how to get to Overdog's doghouse. What's that? It's a Pop Tart wrapper. What do you think? What do you think it is? Nice. I mean, honestly, are we supposed to believe that this is actually comfortable? I mean, that's clearly aluminum foil on stone. So basically, the next day, Wolf gets tired of smelling Nikki, the Shirley Temple lady, and he <laughs> he, he tricks her into getting a bath. Ow! Miserable little filthy red ass scavenger. Maybe now you're gonna smell like one. So does like Wolf always just carry shampoo in his pocket? Is, is that something he does? Is that is that is that Wolf? Is that is that is that is that his go-to thing? It's like oh yeah, oh that, that Wolf guy. He's always got shampoo in that pocket. In the other pocket, he's got some conditioner too. I don't know. He's, he's a weird character. I mean, he's got two Fs in his name. So it's during this cringe fest when Darlene Clementine shows up. But luckily for us, the heroes have camouflaged their vehicle really well. Which surely nobody will see this vehicle that is camouflaged. Oh no, they saw it! They saw it! Oh my gosh, how did they, how did they find it? All right, Wolf, get up. Come on, get up! What a good thing that the snowplow man just turns out to be one of Wolf's friends. Washington, or as I like to call him, Black Washington, because he because he's really a good negotiator and he's always financially in the black. Why why else, why else would I call him Black Washington? Now that we know all the characters, the second half of the film is just a bunch of roadblocks for Wolf and Nikki to have to go through, which include, but not limited to, terribly creepy mutant children who throw bombs at you. They're throwing bombs from cliffs and singing. Like, 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 that's like an actual nightmare of mine. Like, if I had a real nightmare, that's, that's a very, that's a very accurate representation of, like, a real fear. After narrowly escaping this terrifying children scenario, they crash a Michael Moore family reunion! After narrowly escaping the documentary cameras, they end up in a pickle with some mermaids. I'll bet breeding with us would kill him. I'll take that bet. This is also where the film accidentally plays backwards for for a second. It's 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 a weird it's a weird moment. How to do me for the next year? <laughs> and also another thing about this film is it was advertised as the first film to put you in outer space. The first movie that puts you in outer space. Rated PG. And it's called Space Hunter, and then I realized after watching the film, you're never in space. You're in space for like a total of 20 seconds. I, I, I think that the title actually makes sense. Space Hunter. You're trying to find, you're hunting space, you're trying to find it. But regardless, the uh, film continues the, I mean, it's it's pretty predictable. The the, the, the people go into the dog house and the, the dog dude's there and he's like, oh, you guys, you guys can't. You guys can't be here, and I've got your woman. And, and, and Wolf's like, I got two Fs in my name. There's no way you got my woman. And he's like, oh, I got my, I got this carrot. Do you want this carrot? And, and the dog's like, I'm a dog. I don't, I don't like carrots. And they fight and stuff. And, and, and then, and then 
the, uh, the then black then black Washington shows up and he does he does he blows some stuff up and and oh my gosh look at that everybody escaped and and yep yeah, that's that's the it's uh that's space hunter that's space hunter for you they never made a second they never made a sequel to it it's kind of kind of a bummer they they probably should have space space hunter space hunter two Ad adventures in, in in the quarantine restricted not allowed to be there zone. <laughs> Anyways, my name's Drama Llama. It's not actually not my name, my name's Ben, but uh, Drama Llama's the channel, and you just watched a Drama Llama video. Oh my gosh, you know what that means? That means you're gonna die. I'm not saying that the video that you just watched is going to cause your death. I'm, I'm, Space Hunter may cause your death. <laughs>